So lawyers have lots of different ways of expressing themselves. Some of them are wonderful and some of them are utterly awful. But today we're going to talk about one fascinating little sideline, I guess, in the legal drafting world, which is should we use contractions in legal drafting? My name is Chris Hargraves, I'm from Tips for Lawyers, where we write articles from time to time to help young lawyers develop practical skills in their careers. And contractions, for reasons I don't quite understand, seem to be a fascinating area of contention in the world of legal drafting. Some people are completely against the use of contractions in legal drafting, and some people are completely comfortable with the use of contractions in legal drafting. What are contractions? If you don't know, this is things like don't, which I've just said, I've, which I've also just said, anything where we're shortening the word and replacing it with, usually an apostrophe of some sort. So the first question really we need to consider is if we're asking about contractions in legal drafting, what is legal drafting? What counts as legal drafting? Because there's this sort of bizarre thing that happens that lawyers who are perfectly capable of speaking normally and perfectly capable of writing an email to their friends and family that sounds normal, as soon as they put on the lawyer mode and they start writing something, they sound like foreign aliens of some kind. And I guess that's because they're doing legal drafting now instead of just writing stuff in a way that makes sense. So if we're going to define legal drafting to me, we should use a pretty broad definition. It's going to be any form of writing you produce in your practice as a lawyer or an aspiring lawyer, obviously, in legal practice. So you might be writing emails to clients, you may be drafting letters of advice, you might be drafting submissions, you might be doing research papers or memorandum for people or things like that. All of these, are covered in the ambit of legal drafting. And because there is such a disparate range of things available, we're not necessarily going to have a one size fits all answer as to what is appropriate when. If you have listened to anything I've said about legal drafting in any detail, you will know that I've been harping on for a while now about the four main pillars of legal drafting as being purpose, what's it for, audience, who's it for, Tone, how's it going to sound? And brevity, how long should it be or not be, as the case usually is? Contractions really fall into the area of tone. And tone is one of the hardest areas for people to get their heads around because what might be an appropriate tone for email X is not necessarily the same appropriate tone for submission Y. It is going to be a horses for courses consideration. And even within that, different lawyers are going to have different opinions. For me personally, I am entirely comfortable using contraction, contractions in legal drafting. I tend to adopt a more casual style of legal drafting pretty much across the board. So in communications with clients, in letters to other parties, even sometimes in pleadings and submissions, I will usually be that lawyer who's on the less formal writing style end of the spectrum. Now, even within that, however, I am going to be much more comfortable using contractions and a more casual style of language in an email to a client than I am in a submission to a court. It might still get there, I don't apply a particular rule, but in the communication to the court via a submission, you need to be careful that your tone doesn't come across as flippant, as overly casual, as disrespectful. And these considerations sometimes result in that being a more formal style of address. More formal tends to mean fewer contractions. However, one thing I think is probably fair to say is that a lot of young lawyers in particular only have one tone. I call it lawyer tone. And that's something I really think you need to toss in the bin as soon as you can in your legal career because the tone you adopt with your clients in particular and the vast majority of your, your communications are going to be with clients by and large. So that's a big bucket to have an opinion about and you need to start deciding how am I communicating? If I received this email from my lawyer who is on my side and knows me and I've spoken with them on the phone, 
and it looks like a robot wrote it, or a Vulcan perhaps if you're a Trekkie, then how's that going to make me feel? Does it inspire trust? Do I think it looks expensive if my lawyer communicates with me in this way? Does it make me feel good? Does it make me feel bad? To me, developing trust and favor with your clients involves typically embracing a tone that is appropriate to the context in which they're functioning. So different clients will have different expectations in that regard and different things you are writing might have different end goals and that also is going to inform the tone. But as a general principle, I think you're fairly safe to adopt a more casual tone with clients as you become confident and comfortable doing so. And that would be a relatively safe bet compared to adopting an overly casual tone through heavy use of contractions in a more formal document. Okay, that I think is the split. As always, the answer is it depends, but I am comfortable with contractions in the right context for the right purpose. I am less comfortable with contractions if they're being used, they're going to distract from the primary issues or give the wrong impression to the recipient at the other end, be that a judge or another party or whatever. So use your common sense as you're learning to decide whether or not contractions are going to be useful for whatever it is you're writing. Your firm may have some rules or style guides about contractions. If so, you're probably gonna to have to follow that because you're going to be made to follow that anyway. But as you develop and are allowed to form your own opinions about such things, you might decide to adopt a slightly different view depending on whether or not you agree with anything I just said. That's all we have time for today, so I will see you next time.